Progressives like Representative Katie Porter are pushing back against corporate clowns in the Senate like Senator Joe Manchin, who claims that he thinks we should put a pause on the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation bill, which would include incredibly important provisions, including child care, universal pre K, mandatory family leave, and an expansion of the Medicare program to include things like hearing and vision, or vision and dental, I should say. Now, with that said, Katie Porter honestly said something during an interview on cable news that needs to be said more. What is actually motivating or fueling the arguments coming from people like Senator Joe Manchin? Well, let's hear what she has to say. With regard to Senator Manchin and others who want to talk about the price tag for this, let me be clear. You are a business person, you get it, you can do math. If something costs A, then you have two options. You can negotiate down from A or you can find the money. We have revenue options on the table. There are a huge number of corporations that pay zero taxes. And by making savvy revenue choices, for example, using a real corporate profit approach to dealing with those corporations that pay zero, we can generate 700 billion. If we use the corporate minimum tax approach, we're gonna generate 40 billion right there. Right there, Senator Manchin, right there, anyone who's worried about spending, we can generate the revenue so that this isn't about 3.5 trillion in spending. It's not even now about 3.5 trillion in spending because we're gonna generate the revenue to pay for these things. I have the will to do it. The question is, does Senator Manchin, or is he more concerned about his corporate donors, including large corporations, the oil and gas industry, the big pharmaceutical industry and others who are getting away with paying nothing under our current tax system? Listen, that was a prezi for Cenk Uger. So Cenk, <laughs> take it away. There you go, American <laughs> hero, Katie Porter. Okay, so look guys, the dam's broken. This It's a full scale rebellion. In my lifetime, I've been begging progressives, will you please fight back against corporate Democrats? And when you do, can you please point out their corporate donors? The entire country would be behind you if you did that. Because even Republicans go, well, I don't like the donors. It looks like corruption. It looks like, you know, we legalized bribery because we did. Okay. And so I, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. And then a new wave came in, both just Democrats. But remember, Katie Porter wasn't in the, she was in the same class. She's not technically in the squad or just Democrats, but who cares? Right. She's a world beater. Okay. And so, and she always comes with facts. She comes so well prepared. And the other thing is, she's so strong. Stephanie Rule is actually a bit of a corporatist. They're, they're host a bit, of, to say the least. We've shown you other clips that overwhelmingly proves it. But Representative Porter came in so strong there that Stephanie Rule kind of had to admire it. So she was sitting there going, "Okay." I mean, you get Rule to bop her head right. on going after corporations and and making sure they pay their fair share and etc. I mean, that yeah. was great work by Katie Porter. And you see, guys, by the way, when they finally did it, did the house fall in? Did it cave, did it cave in the roof? No, it's totally fine. You see, I told you, like, it's it's okay. You're supposed to challenge, yes, your Democratic colleagues yep. if they're the ones standing in the way of actually getting the bills passed. Otherwise, we're not going to get anything done. And then this is all about ego and not actually helping people. Exactly. There needs to be a strong pressure campaign by Democrats that's directed toward the corporate Democrats in the Senate who are hemming and hawing regarding the reconciliation bill. Now, I do want to go to one additional portion of the interview that Representative Porter had with Stephanie Rule. And in this portion, she's specifically talking about the need for child care. And it gives you a sense of just how important it is to pass the reconciliation bill because aside from child care, it includes so many provisions that would just fundamentally and materially improve the lives of Americans and their families. Let's watch. Okay, let me take this in two separate pieces. The first piece is why should child care be part of this bill? And I've partially addressed this, but let me just make a practical point to you, Stephanie. If we had the men who have run this country for hundreds of years, the wealthy men uh -huh. whose wives and others have taken care of child care, so convinced that it was important, we would have done something about child care 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago when other countries did it. 
So I'm not today all of a sudden convinced that we have the will to deal with child care when we put off this issue decade after decade after decade. People tweet, my colleagues tweet, oh, women's payday, women are falling behind, oh, glass ceiling. <laughs> Guess what? Child care is the solution. It's a crisis in pro economic productivity in this country, and it's one we have to solve as part of building back better. I, I think Katie Porter is the real salt queen. I mean, that was incredible. I, calling out her Democratic colleagues for engaging in the performative social media posts while failing to fight for the very policies that they claim to be in favor of in said social media posts. I, I love the fact that she called that out. I want more of that, more of that. It's amazing. What was that? That was amazing, Porter Unchained. So. Yeah, like this never happens, guys. If you're new to politics, Democrats never criticize other Democrats, let alone in a personal way. Like we got open warfare, mm -hmm. and and that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It depends on how you do it and why you do it. If you're strategic about it and you're trying to get enough pressure so that we can actually pass that three and a half trillion dollar bill, which actually helps Americans with childcare, families, healthcare, climate, all those things that Representative Porter laid out then that's worth the fight. You're not doing it to vent, you're not doing it in an unproductive way, you're doing it in a perfectly productive way. And so now the genie's out of the bottle. AOC saying go back to primaries. Look, after she won her primary, it was it's sometimes a little hard to get her to support other primaries. Now they're saying, okay, fine, primaries. We're in open warfare, mm -hmm. and that's good, that's good. It's not, And the media will tell you generally, oh no, that's bad. Oh, You just follow whatever the corporate Democrats say, otherwise. No, but in this case, the Democratic position is a three and a half trillion dollar bill. So Katie Porter, AOC, all the rest of the progressives are on the side of the Democratic proposal, not just the progressive proposal, the Democratic proposal. So the other Democrats, I guess, would be disloyal and be against unity mm -hmm. if they fought back against that. By the way, instantly our members reacting. Official Kofefe card writes in, Katie Porter for president 2024. She seems to be the most obvious next Bernie quality candidate and she's getting pretty regular airtime. Look, you fight, we appreciate it and it's for a good cause and in the right way. That's how you do good politics so you help the American people, they noticed. The district she represents is Orange County, California. Yeah. I mean, clearly she has the ability to appeal to voters in both parties. Now, Orange County has become less red over the years, but nonetheless, I mean, she's she's clearly speaking to the issues that matter to people regardless of their political affiliation. Because as we've talked about so many times on the show, if you look at polling, it shows you that whether you're talking about Democrats or Republicans, progressive policies poll incredibly well. Because you know, people want their lives to improve materially. And, and the reason why there's so much distrust toward the government and our institutions is because it's been such a long time since they've actually looked out for the uh, livelihoods of Americans. So I'm gonna say one last thing about that because politics is also about strengths. And so she was in, she's in purple district. A lot of the conservative Democrats who were in purple districts ran away from every progressive priority and then lost. She did not. She stood her ground on Medicare for all in a purple district, in a re-election where they spent a ton of money against her. She's like, nope, these colors don't run. And the voters love strength. And so when Democrats run away from issues or run towards Republicans, the voters punish them. When they stand their ground and say, we're gonna help the voters no matter what. I don't care how many donors feelings get hurt. People love that, it's not complicated. Do like Katie Porter does and we'll fix this country quicker than you could imagine. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.